Okay, welcome everybody. Are y'all ready to worship? Let's yeah. everybody stand up. Yeah, come on, get excited. We're excited to worship, right? Because I'm excited. All right, are we ready? Yeah. yeah. I built my house upon the rock, Christ Jesus. All of the ground is sinking. And so when we build our house on the rock, what happens? Nothing's impossible for us to do, right? Because we're stable and we're sturdy. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. How many of you guys know nothing's impossible, right? Nothing's impossible. Do you believe it? Sing it with me, okay? Impossible 
greater than Jesus, right? Jesus is the sweetest. His name is above all names. With him, nothing's impossible. He's sweeter. He's sweeter. Let's just worship the Lord. Thank you. time. Are you excited about offering? I know I am. Well, we just ministered to God with our song and worship, and now we get to minister to God in our giving, which is really, really important too. So why don't you go get your Bibles? I know if it's on your shelf, go ahead and stand up and go grab it. It's important that everybody has their Bibles and reads along so we can put our eyes on the Word of God. 
Now who can tell me what we've been learning about recently? That's right, the steps towards answered prayer. Well right now, I'm gonna talk about some other steps. So once you get your Bibles, open them up to Psalm 37, and we're gonna be reading verses 23 through 25. You guys ready? All right, you're fast. Psalm 37, 23 through 25 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. So that first part says, the steps of a good man. Another translation always also says, the steps of a righteous man. Now who knows who a righteous man is? That's right, that's you and me. Anybody who's asked Jesus into their heart is a righteous man, which means that our steps are ordered by God. And it means our steps in giving can be ordered by God. Have you guys ever had something that you wanted to give? A seed to sow, maybe it was a toy, but you didn't write, quite know where to give it to? You just wanna just get rid of it really fast so you can say you gave it? No, that's not right. We wanna pray, we want God to direct us where to sow it. And that's how God orders our steps in giving. Because when we give something where God tells us to give it, that's when it's most effective. Now in the end of verse 25, it says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. So we're his descendants and we're the righteous, right? So if we let God order our steps and we give exactly where he tells us to give, when he tells us to give, he will never forsake us and we're never gonna be begging for bread like it says. Or that just means to go without. You're always gonna have food, you're always gonna have clothes, you're gonna have the things that you need. So when you have seed, make sure to let God direct your steps. You can pray, you can lean on the Holy Spirit, and he will direct your steps. He will show you exactly where to sow, exactly when to sow it, and that is a guaranteed path to a successful life. Hello, Faith Life Kids! Welcome back! I am so excited for today's lesson. Do you remember what we talked about last week? You don't? Well, that's okay. I'll help you out. We talked about the steps to answered prayer. Now, I have a question for you. You ready for it? How would you like to get every single one of your prayers answered? You like that? Well, me too. And that's what we're going to learn all about, how to get answered prayers. And answered prayers always begin with the Word of God. Now, last week, we covered step number one. Do you remember what it is? It's be specific and stand on God's promises. So you might be thinking, all right, we've got step number one under our belt. Let's move on to step number two. Whoa, 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 wait, we can't go on just yet. We got to go into step number one again and learn even more about God's word because the foundation for our faith is the word of God. And when we have it deeply planted into our heart, that's when we know what he wants for our life, and that's when we get our answered prayers. So, do you remember the song that we learned last week all about the steps to answered prayer? You don't? Well, that's all right. Let's go back and take a listen. These are the steps to answered prayer. Every single step in faith will help to get you there. Like an elevator, but more like the stairs. Every single step you take, every little step in faith, leads you up to answered prayer. But what are the steps? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Step one, be specific, his word is true. Two, ask God for the thing that you'd like him to do. Three, after praying, think positively. Four, guard your mind from wrong thinking. Five, is meditating on his promise to you. Six, is thanking God for answering you. Seven, make your prayer a statement of faith. And when you do each one of them, you're praying in faith. These are the steps to answer prayer. Every single step you take will help to get you there. Like an elevator, but more like the stairs. Every 
every single step you take, every little step in faith leads you up to answered prayer. I think I'm catching on. All right. Well, let's see. One, One be specific. His word is true. Two, Two, ask God for the thing that you'd like him to do. Three, after praying, think positively. Four, guard your mind from wrong thinking. Five, is meditating on his promise to you. And six, is thanking God for answering you. Seven, make your prayer a statement <laughs> Good of faith. Job. And when, when we do each one of them, we're praying in faith. These are the steps to answer prayer. Every single step in faith will help to get us there. Like an elevator, but more like the stairs. Every single step we take, every little step in faith leads us up to answer prayer. Wow, wasn't that an awesome song? These are the steps to answered prayer. Isn't it so good that we are learning every single step to answered prayer? Well, I think it is because we are gonna get answered prayers. So let's stick around, you and me too, I've got stuff to learn, and let's learn all about how to get every single one of our prayers answered. Ooh boy, I am excited. I'm gonna make some delicious crispy treats. I got my rice cereal, my butter, and my marshmallows, and my bowl. So let's start here. Get some Rice Krispies. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's enough there. Whoops. And get my melted butter in there. Ooh, yeah, get big amounts of butter. Get that consistency right. Okay, and then the marshmallows. Extra marshmallows. I'm just gonna mix and turn and churn. Get that delicious consistency. Mm -mm. I like some crispy treats. Marcus, whoa, hey there, Wilbur. I smelled marshmallows from across the prairies. Yeah, I was over there with the cows singing them lullabies. I could smell the marshmallows. Well, that's because I'm making some marshmallow crispy treats for you and <gasps> Mr. McGill. For me, Mr. McGill. Oh, Marcus, well, I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's okay. I'll All clean right. that up later. Well, I'll tell you what, you hit it right on the nose. Those are my favorite oh, kind of treats. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. I am Ooh, just, they look good. just about done. Get the final little mixings done in here. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try a bite? <gasps> Do I? Of course I want to try a bite. Give me, give, give old Wilbur a bite. All right, let me mm -hmm. try to get a big old bite for you here, Mr. I like marshmallows. So, all right. Ooh. How is it? Do you like it? Did I get enough marshmallows? I made sure I put extra marshmallows so it's just so, so good. Well, hold on just a second there. Before you put those in the pan, there's something about them. Hmm. Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely something about them that seems a little bit off. Is it, is it the consistency? Cause I, I thought maybe I yeah, should mix yeah, it some yeah, more. Yeah, so. it is. Let me get some. The, wait, 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 wait. I'll just mix it a little bit. The consistency, the texture, and the viscosity is nothing. It's nothing like the Rice Krispie Treats that I have grown to enjoy. Well, I, it's kind I, of dry. I got all the ingredients in here. I put. Well, the, well, well. Let's 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 take a moment. Let's take a moment. We'll retrace your steps. Okay. Okay. So when you you got your bowl, what was the first thing you put in there? So I have my bowl. Then I got my rice cereal and okay. I dumped it in here. All right. And then did you, did you put the butter in like you're supposed to? Yep. Yeah, I got my butter and I scooped it all in there, a whole cup of it. Yes, I see that now. Okay. Now, here's a thing that I find a little bit interesting. I can only assume that this contained the third ingredient of the crispy treats, which mm -hmm. would be the marshmallows. Lots of marshmallows. I had that full to the top. Okay. Well, if if you if you melted the marshmallows like you're supposed to. Wouldn't, wouldn't this here container be kind of sticky? Like, with marshmallow stickies? Mm-hmm, yep. If if I did, in fact, melt the marshmallows and put them in there, it would be sticky. Uh, 
I I forgot to melt oh. the marshmallows. Yes, yes, I see that now. Yeah, they're just still. Yeah, I understand now. Just a whole marshmallow. Well, I tell you what, Marcus, when you're following a recipe, it's really important. Got prop for this one. Watch this. It's really important when you're cooking that you follow all the steps. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur. Oh, you're such a hoot. Oh, you make me feel good about myself. Thank you. Well, I guess I gotta melt some marshmallows then and do it right so that way I can get you and Mr. Miguel some good crispy treats. Well, I'll tell you what, that sounds pretty good. You should get to doing that. All right, I'll All get right. right to it. Thanks for the help, Wilbur. You're welcome, Marcus. All right. Well, hello, Big Life Kids. You're probably thinking, what is Miss Hannah doing? Well, I'm taking steps. Do-ba-dee-doo, I'm taking steps in faith. You want to learn more about Steps to Answered Prayer? Good, because I want to teach you about it. We have been learning about praying specifically in order to get an answer from God. Did you know that praying correctly in order to get real results from God is one of the most important things that we can do as Christians? It is! It's so exciting. Do you remember what the first step is to answered prayer? Oh, here a little bit. I think I got it. You got it. It's be specific and stand on God's promises. Now, God's promises are in His Word. And God's Word is Him speaking directly to us. That's really awesome. You know, when we spend time meditating on God's Word, and reading his word, it's like spending time with God. I like spending time with God. So, I like hearing what he has to say to me. Let's do that by reading 1 John 5, 14 and 15. I've got mine marked here, but I'll give you a moment to grab your Bibles if you need them or open it up. It's in the back of the book. You can see there's lots of pages here. All right, let's read 14 first. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now you might be thinking, Miss Hannah, there were some big words in there. Maybe you didn't quite follow along. Well, let me clear it up for you. The first word that I wanna clear up is confidence says, now this is the confidence, and confidence is knowing for sure. Like every morning you wake up, you jump out of bed, you run downstairs, and you know for sure your mom has got breakfast for you. That's something you know for sure. That's the same type of knowing that we have in the scripture. So let's read it like this. Now this is what we know for sure that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, now what's his will? His will is his word. God's will for our lives, it's all in his word, in the Bible. So it says, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we have the petitions. Now petitions are like our prayers. So if we have our prayers that we've asked of him, that means we have answers to our prayers that we've asked of him. So here it says, we know that we have the answers to the prayers that we have asked of him. So let's read it from the very, very, very top with our new understanding. Now this is what we know for sure that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the answer to prayers that we have asked of him. So to sum this all up, when we pray using scriptures in the word of God, we know that that is his will for our life. We know that he hears us and we know that he will answer those prayers. Now, let's spend time knowing God and getting to know Him even better as Miss Michelle does our devotionals. Hey kids, welcome in. It's devotion time. 
I'm Miss Michelle, and it's time to sit with God. I'm going to share a story with you. This one is called God Wants the Best for Me. So you ready? This is going to be great. When you say I love you to your mommy, has she ever said I love you more? It's so nice to be loved, but there's someone who loves you even more than that, and that's God. His love is bigger than the sky. Since he loves you so much, he wants the best for you. He wants you to have food, toys, friends, clothes, and lots of other good things. God tells us about these things in the Bible. The Bible is full of God's promises. For all of his children, every promise in the Bible is for you. It's a seed that God wants for you to plant in your heart. He only wants good things for us and nothing bad. Like being sick or poor, that wouldn't be any fun at all. God wants us to be healthy and rich. He tells us how to live the best life by what he has written in the pages of the Bible. The Bible says in Joshua 1:8, "This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous." and you will have good success. Success means winning in life and not being defeated. We may struggle at times, but God shows us how to pray and to receive the promises that are in his word. God told us when we would have success and what to do to be prosperous. He promised that we would have it after planting, focusing and doing his words. We can't have fruit without planting seeds first. The fruit comes after the seed and grows into a plant. Has your mom ever promised you something? Promises are fun. They tell us something good is coming. Kind of like, we're going to the zoo next week. When you hear that, you get excited about the future. Even though you have to wait, you have joy because you know what's ahead. It's like that with God. The Bible tells us all the good things that are coming our way. As we trust him and wait, we can have great joy. The seeds in Joshua 1:8 say that we must read our Bible, talk about it, think about it, and do it. Since we are doers of his words, then what we do will be prosperous and we will have success. So let's close our eyes and pray to God. Father God, I thank you for your good word. It is alive forever. Thank you for keeping all the promises you make. We believe the good things are coming our way. We have joy because you are faithful. to do it in Jesus name we pray amen thank you for coming and we'll see you next time in rovers off to the races did you know that every race has two lines well there's a finish line and there's something else do you know what it is it's the starting line it's the place where the race begins Runners to the starting line. On your mark. Get set. Go. Do you know where the race begins with our prayer? It's supposed to start with his word. It's supposed to start with the will of God. Go with me to 1 John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. And let's find out what his will is concerning prayer. It says this. Now this is the confidence that we have in God that if we ask anything according to his will, that's the starting line, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have whatever we ask that is how we can be confident every time we pray to god we can know that we're going to get an answer to this prayer because he's already promised the very thing that we're asking for did you know that that is the most important part of this whole thing finding out what his word says about these things so we're directing our prayers in the right direction so we're running the race And along the track God called us to run. Did you know that in 
It's um, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. It says this, For all the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. How exciting is that? If you can get in the Word of God and find out what His will is for your life, find out all the good things that He already wants you to have, if you'll get in there and find out what that is, you'll get your answer to your prayer every single time. And that is what we want for you. We want you getting your prayers answered every time. So when you're running your race of faith, when you're praying in faith, you hit that line just like Rover did. Doer, doer, it's time to read our chapter. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> oh good. Today. I love the Word of God. And me too. reading the chapter is, is one of my most favorite parts of the day. Mine too. You ready for it? I am ready. Okay, we're in John 15. <gasps> that is the one that is right after the one we did yesterday. Yeah, that's how it goes. Hey, do you want to pray real quick? Okay, I will pray. Okay. Lord, we are about to read your word, and we thank you for your word and the gift that it is to us and our lives. We ask that you open our eyes and open our hearts to receive new truths and new revelations from the word as we read it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, John 15, mm -hmm. we'll start in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away in every... Doer? Doer, mm -hmm. you paying attention? Yes, 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 I am paying attention uh, because uh, uh, there's a butterfly over here. Well, I, I see that you're paying attention to the butterfly, but let's pay attention to the Word of God. Right, the word of God. Okay. Okay, so... I'm butterfly. But come on. Okay. We're reading the word of God. Let's focus on this. So, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean. Do her. Do her. What? Do, do her. Hey, you paying attention to the word of God? Did you hear that? No, I kind of block everything out. Otis, I'm... Otis is barking, and he never barks unless it's something very serious. There must be a squirrel in his yard. Okay, but do it right now. We're reading the Word of God, and we want to give our full attention to what we're reading. Right, we want to give our full attention to what. Uh... To the Word of God, and we do want you to. Hear that? It sounds like there might be two squirrels. on it. Do her. Mm. We we want to focus on God's Word. We want to meditate on what He's saying. I have an idea. Okay, what is it? I've got two ears. Yes, that's true. You have two ears. So what if with this one, I listen to you, and with this one, I listen to see what Otis is talking about. That way, I'll know everything I need to know. <laughs> Dewar, that's not how it works. What? Uh, no? No, Dewar. You can't give your full attention to two things at the same time. But... It, you're about to read a scripture that tells me that I'm wrong, huh? Well, yes. <laughs> Do her, let's go. I was right. I am wrong. <laughs> I am but, but, confused. Yeah, Here, let's, let's read the word of God and see what it has to say about this. In Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. Yes, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Good success is the best kind of success. It sure is. And we want to have good success in our prayer life, right? Yes, in our prayer life. We right. pray not just to make noises, but because we want to see results. Exactly. And to have good results and good success in our prayer life, we have to meditate on the Word of God. That's we what have it says to again. medicate the Word of God. Wait, no. <laughs> we don't need to medicate the Word of God. We need to meditate on the Word of God. Yes. You are right. Mm -hmm. We absolutely need to do that. We need to meditate on the Word of God, which is the best idea ever, even though I don't know what it means at all. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Meditating means to focus on the Word of God. Focus. Mm, we're fully paying attention to what's in here. And meditating is kind of like chewing on the Word of God. Chewing on the, <gasps> chewing on the Word of God? Yeah, but not like 
you know, not really physically eating the word of God. Not like that. Not no. like when I get uh, like one of those delicious rawhide bones that they flavor with the super secret sauce. And oh, you know, yeah. you can get one of those and you can just eat it and swallow it, but then that's no good. It does you no good at all. What you have to do right. is chew on it. Just, just chew over and over mm-hmm. and, and just to savor it. Yeah, that's the same with the word of God. <sighs> We want to with the word of God. Yes, we want to read it over and over and plant God's word into our heart and hide it in our heart. So then we have it when we need it. Chew on it. Yeah. <laughs> so so you'll get the benefit. Yes, exactly. So we want to read his word. We want to meditate on it. We want to chew on it, read it over and over again. So then we know it and then we have good success when we go to pray. Do you know what I want to do now? I have a feeling you're going to tell me. I think we should go back to the beginning of the chapter and listen to it again so I can really focus and pay attention and chew on the word. (laughs) Dewey, I think that's a great idea. Let's go back to John 15 and start from the top. All right. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in my... Hey guys, let's do confessions. Repeat after me. I am. I am the righteousness. The righteousness of God. Of God in Christ. In Christ. Christ. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good looking. Very rich and a major blessing. Okay, get your jewels out. I'm a doer, I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the Word of God. All right, guys, let's grab our Bibles. This is my Bible. This This is is my my Bible. Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. I can be what God says I can be. Great job, guys. Okay, boys and girls, what am I holding in my hands? Can anybody guess? That's right. Greeting cards, maybe birthday card, maybe Christmas card. You know, when you receive a greeting card, maybe you get a birthday card from grandma or from your aunt. Well, Typically, there's a message in there, and it's a special message just for you. And every time you read that message, it's like they're talking to you. And you know, I have a very special birthday card that I got from my sister. And I leave that in my bedroom right on my dresser. And it's so special to me, it's like she's talking to me. Well, let me ask you another question. What is this that I'm holding? That's right, the B-I-B-L-E, the book for you and me. Whose word is in here? Yes, God's word. And guess what? Every time you read your word, you read your Bible, it's God speaking to you. Oh, and it's so, so special. And let's read a scripture out of it right now. I want you to go to John 1, 1. All right. Now, when you find it, read along with me. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Think about that. The Word was God. You know, the beginning to answered prayer is always in the Word of God. And everything you need to know is in this Word. And we're learning all about prayer. So, this is going to be the very most important thing that we need to do is get in our Word. Now, can you repeat this after me? Okay. The Bible 
is how God talks to me. Let me hear you. Good. Let's do it again. Let's do it all together, okay? The Bible is how God talks to me. Great job. That is wonderful. You know what? I think we should give thanks to our Heavenly Father God for His Word. Let's pray. Okay. Say this after me. Dearly beloved Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we want to thank you for your word. It is life to us. And we love your word. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful. You shall meditate. Hey, doer, what you doing? Ah. Hello. Hi! What you, you got your Bible out? You are so perky today. Oh uh, yeah? It's the middle of the day, I'm doing my stuff. Uh, what you doing? I am being a doer of the Word of God. A doer oh. of the Word of God. Okay, what part? I want to have good success, so it's... Yeah, me too. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth. And you shall meditate it day, day and night. Hey, that's Joshua 1 8, right? That is the one. Yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, and I'm meditating on the word. <laughs> Do I, are you crying? No. Um, okay, it is so. Just, it is just that I am very sleepy. All right. Why are you sleepy. Why are you so sleepy? Well, it says to meditate day and night, and right. the days are great, and the night just so happens to be the time when I am normally sleeping. And right. And so That's last night, instead of doing that, instead of doing in, sleeping, instead of sleeping, instead I, of doing sleeping, I, uh, dude, you stayed up all night. Ah, uh, yes. What do you mean? Yes, you stayed up all night. It You're was, not supposed to do that. It was very hard. Well, yeah, that's not the way God created us. They turned the lights off. And yep. Then, and, and, that's and when you're supposed to sleep. It dark, and, and I was trying to stay awake. Oh, I think I'm getting it. Dewar, you're thinking that since Joshua 1.8 says meditate on the word day and night. Mm, day and night. So you think that means every second of every day and every second of every night? What? Yes. Is that not no. what that, that's not what that means? No, it's not what it means. I could have gone to sleep. <laughs> you could have gone to sleep. Oh. <laughs> so This you, table is soft. It's it's not that soft. Are you so awake? Do her. But wait! Do wake up! Okay. You're up. <laughs> if that is not what that means. Yes. Then what does that mean? Okay, so what the scripture means is that we're constantly thinking about something, right? Well, you gotta be thinking. Right! It's so... Like when you're sleeping, which would be so nice. Yeah, sleep would be nice. Okay, but are you paying attention? Oh. Do it. Okay. So you're constantly thinking about something. Mm, yeah. Well, the scripture is saying to be thinking about the word of God in those times that you aren't doing other things. So you're changing your thoughts up. You know, if you're... Okay, so... Sometimes Mr. Snickers. Mr. Snickers, he is a bad guy. Right, and sometimes you don't have the greatest thoughts about that situation with him, but you can change those thoughts. Think about the word of God. So in this word, when it says meditate on it day and night, what it really means is to get the word in you. So in those type of situations, the word is what comes out of you instead of doubt or fear or worry. Right, we talked about meditating and chewing on the yeah, word. Yeah, exactly. So you chew on it, you get it in you, and that's how you have a successful prayer life. So in the scripture, when it says meditate on it day and night, it means you can meditate on it day, you can meditate on it night. But it does not mean that you have to not sleep. That is wonderful news. I think it's time for you to go take a nap, okay? I think it is way past time for me to take a nap. Yeah, and I'll go meditate on the word. <laughs> Ooh, I'll see you later. Actually, right here. Hi, friends. I'm Miss Chrissy, and I'm going to teach you a song today. 
we're gonna be like trees. So I need everyone to lift up your hands and be like branches. Make yourself nice and tall, as tall as you can, and then stretch out your, your leaves at the top here. There you go, and you can be like a tree in the wind. There you go, just like that. So here's how the song goes. Are you ready? Say, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, and I'll be like a tree that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. That's right, you gotta go all the way down when we say moved. Ready? I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I'll be like a tree that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my savior, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my savior, I shall not be moved. I'll be like a tree that's planted by the water. Oh, I shall not be moved. Farmer Miguel, Farmer Miguel, I'm here. I'm so excited to help you again today in your garden. Hey Lucy, I'm so glad you're here. Are you ready to continue to learn about how planting works? I sure am. I even got some new overalls so we could match. Oh, those look so nice, Lucy. Well, check it out. I even got you this planter box so you can have your own little garden. Oh, that's for me? Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Lucy. So what we're doing today is we are going to be pulling all of the rocks and weeds out of the soil so that way we can plant the seeds. I never realized there were so many steps to planting. There are a lot, but when we follow them in the correct order, we're going to have good success. Speaking of that, check out what I brought you today. <gasps> oh, ooh, I know what those are. They're seed packets. That's right. So. Uh, this here is a seed, also called in Spanish, semilla. Can you say that? A semilla. Good job. So a semilla, or a seed, has a specific purpose. Um, what's a purpose? Purpose is the specific reason we, for what we were created to do. So this carrot seed here is purpose to grow into a carrot because it has everything inside the seed that it needs to grow into a carrot, not a cucumber or a watermelon. <laughs> oh, that's just silly, Farmer Miguel. A carrot can't become anything but a carrot. That's right. So, um, what's going to happen when we plant these flower seeds? They're going to grow into flowers. I like flowers. They're so beautiful and bright. That's right again, Lucy. You're so smart. Each seed has a specific purpose, just like God has a specific purpose for each one of our lives. And His will is the perfect plan for each one of us. So I was created specifically to be a Lucy and do the things a Lucy should do. That's right. You were created to fulfill God's will, just like I was created to fulfill God's will too. When, now, God's word seeds work the same. When you plant God's word seeds in your heart, you are going to get your answers because you're basing your prayer on God's perfect word and will. What are some ways that I can get God's word deep in my heart? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. By speaking and thinking God's word. When we speak and think scripture, that is called meditating. Speaking of meditating, have you found the verse that you're standing on for your science fair project idea? Oh, yes, I picked it out. It's James 1, 5. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God, and it will be given to you. God is generous and won't correct you for asking. So I've asked him for wisdom for the perfect idea for my project. That's wonderful, Lucy. Now, because God's word seed is in your heart, you can confidently believe that a good idea is headed your way. Well, I'm actually looking forward to my science project now. That's good, Lucy. I'm so excited for you. 
Well, here, let's go ahead and pick out some seeds that you'd like to start planting. Okay, um, let's see. Can we do flowers? I like flowers. And, um, how about cucumbers and strawberries? Always. Okay, Lucy, well, here's your flower seed. Here are some cucumber seeds. And last but not least, some strawberry seeds. Did you have a good time at Farmer Miguel's today? Oh yes, Mommy, I sure did. He taught me that there are a lot of different kinds of seeds, and each seed has a purpose. Oh, Lucy, that's so good, baby. Purpose is a big word. Do you know what that means? I do, because Farmer Miguel explained it to me. Purpose is the specific thing that we were created to do. I also learned another new word. You did? Mm-hmm. It's semilla. What's semilla? Semilla is the Spanish word for seed. Ah, very good. The seed is like the word of God. We plant the seeds in the soil just like we plant the Word of God in our hearts. Oh, wow, Lucy. You are learning so much at Farmer Miguel's. I like learning new things, and I like helping. Well, I'm so pleased you're doing both of those things. Do you want to learn a new confession about how to plant God's Word in your heart? Oh, yes, I love new confessions. Okay, repeat after me. I focus on God's Word. I focus on God's Word. I listen to God's Word. I listen to God's Word. I think about God's Word. I think about God's Word. I believe His Word. I believe His Word. I say His Word. I say His Word. I plant God's Word in my heart. I plant God's Word in my heart. Hey, Mommy, I just thought of some motions we can do to go with the confession. Ah, oh, that sounds great. We can put our hands on our eyes for focus, on our ears for listen, on our head for think, on our heart for believe, and on our mouth for say. That's great. Let's try it. Hey, boys and girls, you can follow along with us. Mommy will say the confession, and you and I will repeat it and do the motions. Yes, boys and girls, follow along with Lucy. Here we go. I focus on God's Word. I focus on God's Word. I listen to God's Word. I listen to God's Word. I think about His Word. I think about God's Word. I believe His Word. I believe His Word. I say his word. I say his word. And I plant God's word in my heart. And I plant God's word in my heart. Yay, we did it. That was awesome. Good job. And good job, boys and girls. Good job. Hey, everyone. Come on in. We've been talking about how to plant God's word seed deep in our hearts. Remember, God's Word Seed is just like this big bag of seeds. Except instead of planting these seeds in the ground, we are planting God's Word Seed in our hearts. Today you're going to need your Bible and your heart pocket necklace. Now if you don't have one, you can just look back at Lesson 1 of Steps to Answered Prayer to learn how to make your own heart pocket necklace. Now, what are the ways that we can help the Word get planted firmly in our hearts? Did I hear someone say focus? That is right. That is one of the ways that we can plant His Word deep in our hearts. Now, let's do the motions to those ways together. We can focus on His Word. We can listen to His Word. We can think about His Word. We can believe in His Word. And we can say His Word. Repeat after me. I plant God's Word in my heart. Great job. Now let's turn to the book of James together. 
God's word is His will, and His will is for us to have wisdom. So today's word seed is James chapter 1, verse 5, which is His promise of wisdom. It says, if any of you need wisdom, you should ask of God and it will be given to you. God is generous and he won't correct you. Let's talk about what this verse means. When it says, if any of you need wisdom, that means when you or someone else you know may need help. It says you should ask God and it will be given to you. That means God wants us to pray to him and ask him and that he will give us wisdom so we know what to do. It also says that God is generous and he won't correct you. That means God, he likes to give us help and he will never ever get upset at you for asking. So let's take today's word seed and plant it in our heart pocket necklace just like we're gonna take his word and we're gonna plant that firmly in our hearts. I encourage you to, to take today's word seed and write it down, focus on it, think about it, so you can help that seed get planted firmly in your heart. Hi friends, we've been learning a lot about prayer, about how prayer is talking to God and having Him talk back to us and give us encouragement and instruction for our lives. But there's something very important that has to happen before we can have that kind of closeness and continual open conversation with our Father God. Do you know what that might be? That's right, I think I heard somebody say it. You must be born again. When we call upon the name of Jesus and believe in our heart, a miracle happens. We give our heart over to Him and He gives us a brand new heart that's sensitive to hear His voice. So if you're interested in having that kind of closeness with your Father, you can have that miracle right now. All you have to do is repeat after me and believe in your heart. Say, Father God, I believe in you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for all my sin. I believe that he is risen again and that he is alive right now. Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior, and I love you, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, you just got your miracle. Welcome to the family of God. Hasn't this been a fun and exciting time? Well, as we've seen, it's so important that we follow all the steps so we can be successful in anything we do. And same way we get answers to our prayers. We want to follow that first step. Be specific and stand on God's promises. And we want to put the Word of God in our hearts, plant it deep in our hearts. And when we focus, when we focus and meditate on God's Word, that helps us to do that. Then we can choose one of God's promises and stand on that promise. Let's be doers of Joshua 1, 8 by not allowing God's Word to depart from our mouth, but that we will do what God's Word tells us to do, and then we will have good success. All right, now, don't forget to come back and see us next time.